please convey back to the chief how much we appreciate him. Okay, at this point I'd like to introduce Keontae Humphreys from the ACLU who will set us on the road to the rest of the program. We're almost there. I probably don't need this, but I'll try to talk low so it doesn't echo too bad. Um, good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming out on such a um, wet and jury day. I really am excited to see so many folks in the audience um, on an issue that some people say isn't a hot topic, but I would argue it's probably one of the most important things that this community can talk about. If you've ever heard me speak, you've heard me say time and time again, Escambia County incarcerates more children per capita than any place else in the free world. And I always pause so that folks really get that. Not Tampa, not California, not Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, not those places that we believe are crime rate, but right here in Escambia County, we send more kids to jails and prisons than any place else in the free world. And so tonight I'm really excited, as I mentioned, to have you all out. We will, before we jump into our panel, give you an opportunity to eat your food and digest it. We're going to watch a quick clip. Well, I won't say quick, it's about 19 minutes long. Um, of an attorney from Jacksonville, attorney Hank Cox. He was a part of the legal defense of a young man named Christian Hernandez a few years ago, who was, um, I believe, 11 or 12 times? 12. 12, when he was um, charged as an adult for the um, death of his younger brother. And it was because of local private attorneys from very large firms that came together to work with the local public defender's office there in Jacksonville, which is Judicial Circuit 4, that um, Christian Hernandez is actually, though tried as an adult, was not sentenced as an adult. And so um, hopefully tonight you walk away learning a little bit more about why this issue is important, but also understanding that there's facets. And so each young person can be tried as an adult, I'm sorry, they can be charged as an adult, tried as an adult, and then sentenced as an adult. And that sentencing part is something I, I um, sometimes bittersweetly say I've seen too much of. When I used to work for the Southern Poverty Law Center before I worked for the ACLU, I spent three and a half years visiting young people in jails and prisons across the state. And when I tell you it is not Disney World or Disneyland, it is exactly the polar opposite. And too often, young people there are um, they're likely to spend hours upon hours, upon days even, in solitary confinement. Um, there's little to no educational services that exist in our, um, de within the Department of Corrections. And so I won't go too far in because I, I want you to hear it from people who've experienced it, advocates who are part of the system, people who are trying to change it. But my intern, Sean, is somewhere in the room over there. Um, he's going to be handing out some brochures about a project that um, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the ACLU, and several other advocacy organizations across the state um, have put together called No Place for a Child. Also, there's a white paper issue commentary by the James Madison Institute that is also being shared. And for those of you who have pen and paper or tablets handy, we are, we are writing to um, Senator Evers, who is actually the chair of the Civic Criminal Justice Committee, asking him to support bills this session. Many of you, I'm sure, by function of association with the organization that's hosting tonight, know that our legislative session has been moved up in the year. And so right now, committees are starting to meet. And we would really, really love to see these two bills get traction. And that's House Bill 129 and Senate Bill 314. Again, that's House Bill 129 and Senate Bill 314. Those are bills that would um, shift, shift this paradigm that we currently um, are struggling with in charging and sentencing young people as adults. And so we not only want this bill to get traction, but hopefully pass this session, as there's been years of work behind lob lobbying and advocating for the end of um, direct file, as it is also called. Um, but if 
when you send that letter, and I believe the letter actually lists the house bill numbers. It does, I have it down here. Yes, it does. Um, so please avail yourselves of sending that letter via email or in a written correspondence sometime in the very near future as our own Senator Evers has an opportunity to make change on this issue. The last thing I will say is, is a couple of statistics. On any given night, almost 300,000 children across this nation are either charged as, as adults or spending time in adult jails or prisons. Almost 300,000. And in fact, and I don't want to draw unnecessary attention to anyone because it is a sensitive issue, we have parents of some of those children in our audience today. And so I don't just throw around numbers. I don't just tout statistics. Right here in this community, our neighbors, our church members, our colleagues, some of which have children that have been affected by this very policy. And so think about that um, when you decide whether or not to make this issue one of the next issues you champion in your lifetime. With that, I say thank you, and I think we can go ahead and start the clip.